So today I'm going to give another uh, science video, and this is about a paper that I described a little bit in a video a couple weeks ago, uh, a scientific paper that just came out. I was actually one of the authors, although really my part was quite small, but I talked a little bit about uh, a friend of mine who was uh, the person who really put most of the work into this paper along with some uh, researchers from his laboratory. And this goes through a calculation as to uh, how many people we think uh, have limb girdle muscular dystrophy in uh, the US. And so I'll sort of describe how the calculation is done and then give some numbers at the end. So to start with an analogy, imagine that you have this giant pile of marbles and most of the marbles are green, but every once in a while there's one that's orange. Uh, and maybe you think that roughly one out of every 200 marbles is orange, but you don't know that, you know, the, the proportion of orange marbles exactly. Uh, and what you do is you have a bunch of people each uh, grab two marbles without looking at what they're grabbing. And then you see, okay, they might end up with two green marbles, two orange marbles, or one orange and one green. And you want to see what uh, proportion of people are going to grab two orange marbles. Okay, now the reason for this analogy is that the marbles represent uh, copies of a certain gene. The green marbles are copies without a mutation. Uh, the orange marbles do have a mutation. Now, if it's a recessive disease, as long as you have at least one green marble, you don't have symptoms of the disease. Uh, you only have symptoms if you were unlucky enough to get uh, two orange marbles. Now, if you work out the numbers, uh, if someone grabs two marbles from this pile and one out of every 200 is orange, uh, a person has about a 99% chance of grabbing two green marbles, about a 1% chance of getting one green and, and one orange. Uh, the probability of getting two orange ones is actually very small, one out of 40,000. So, uh, you're much more likely to uh, get one green and one orange, which genetically means that you're a carrier for the disease, but don't actually have the disease than, um, you know, someone who actually has the disease. Okay, so how do we apply this to genetics? Well, it turns out that uh, since we've been able to sequence the entire genomes of people, um, there have been databases um, built up by, you know, several different, um, you know, groups or organizations that are publicly available, and they have something like, you know, tens of thousands of uh, people's genomes uh, are, are all analyzed and put into the database. Now, it's all done anonymously. We have no idea, you know, who these people are to protect their privacy. Uh, so say that we have uh, 50,000 people in the database. And uh, like in the, in the example um, from the last slide, one out of every 200 copies of a certain gene has a mutation. So uh, then one out of every hundred people should be a carrier, which means that if you have 50,000 people in the database and you look at, you know, how many people have one copy, one good copy and one mutation and the other copy, uh, that'll be about 500 carriers. Uh, 
uh, but only um, you'd only expect you know one or maybe two uh, or maybe you won't find any people would actually have the disease within the 50,000 people. So really, you, you can't count the people with the, the disease and come up with a reliable number, but you can count the carriers and get good enough statistics that you, know, you can figure out, uh, okay, what fraction of all of the genes out there have a mutation, and then what's the likelihood that someone would get two mutations and would have the disease. Okay, but of course there's some limitations. Uh, one, uh, un unlike just looking at green versus orange marbles, it's not always clear which um, changes in DNA are actually disease-causing mutations. So sometimes you, you can't tell, well, this version of the gene looks different than this version, but does it really cause a problem? Uh, we don't always know. Um, secondly, uh, we're, we've assumed in the example when people are grabbing marbles that they just grab two marbles without looking. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, completely by chance uh, what color they end up with. Well, uh, what that means in genetics is that uh, the gene pool is well mixed. Uh, but, you know, if you think about it a little bit, um, people don't just choose someone entirely at random to have children with. Uh, in, in fact, you know, people tend to be somewhat more likely to have children with someone from a similar genetic background, which means that if, you know, people in that background are more likely to be carriers of a certain mutation, then carriers might be more likely than you would expect just by chance to marry each other, have kids. Uh, so there would be more people with two mutations than you might expect just from the statistical analysis. Um, secondly, um, that doesn't really, um, there's the distinction between prevalence and incidence. Um, prevalence is, you know, how many people who were born genetically have the disease, meaning have two mutations. Incidence is how many people are out there in the population right now who have the disease, and often that meaning they have symptoms. So people sometimes aren't symptomatic of the disease their whole life, and uh, people with the disease may or may not have the same life expectancy as someone who doesn't have the disease. You know, so, you know, there's, there's some caveats. Okay, so for some actual numbers for this, um, for the more common um, genetic subtypes of uh, LGMD, the incidence is about, um, you know, 10 roughly per million people. Okay, so uh, for uh, 2B, which is the type that I have, uh, the, the number that you know, came out of the st analysis in the paper was, um, you know, the best guess is 7.5 per million, but you know, really we don't know the exact number. So kind of when you do the math you know, a little more elaborately, you get, you know, we think the range that it could be is somewhere between about you know five point something to nine point something per million, uh, which would translate to with the U.S. population there'd be something like two thousand to three thousand uh, people in the U.S. with the disease. Um, in terms of how many people are a carrier, that uh, actually means that about one out of every um, 180 people out there is a carrier. So being a carrier is actually much 
more common than you might think. Now, for some of the rarer types, and I have these in gray in this, um, in this slide, uh, we didn't really see enough um, people who were carriers to get what I would consider a very accurate number. Now, there's, there's a couple other ways you can estimate the incidence. Uh, one way, and this has been done, you know, a few different times, is to just offer testing to everyone who might have an LGMD and then see how many people uh, are diagnosed with, you know, all the different diseases. Now, that doesn't give you an absolute number, but it does give you the relative numbers. In other words, if you offer testing to a whole bunch of people and uh, diagnose 100 people with 2A and 50 people with 2B, then you don't know how many people there are with either out there in the world, but you know that uh, there's probably about twice as many with 2A as with 2B. So for 2C and 2E, which have very small numbers, uh, what people have generally found is they're both um, about half as common as 2D. Now, this analysis, you know, shows, yeah, 2D is more common, but, you know, really the, the genetic testing and how many people are diagnosed indicates that uh, 2D isn't 50 times more common than uh, 2C, which is what this would would indicate, and you know, the same the same thing for some of the uh, other more common things. So, so why uh, is this important? Well, if one wants to develop treatments for the disease, or diagnose them, diagnose them, or do a clinical trial, which requires finding patients. Um, it's very helpful to know how many people we're actually talking about, how many people are out there with the disease. Um, and because genetic testing is a relatively new thing uh, in a rare disease, often a lot of doctors don't know what they're looking at. Uh, it can be very hard for someone to get a diagnosis. There's a lot of people right now who, you know, have these diseases but don't know, know they have something but don't know what they have. So, you know, this was an, you know, an effort to, you know, try and come up with a reasonable number. Now, if someone had asked me, you know, a few years ago what I thought the the incidence of, you know, the 2B, the disease that I have, was I would have said, well, my best guess is between 5 and 10 per million. Okay, it turns out that was um, right on, but, you know, really, I'm, I'm not that good. I, I kind of just got lucky. But now, you know, thanks to, you know, the efforts of, you know, my co-authors, um, you know, we have some, you know, published mathematically plausible estimates for, um, you know, the number of patients out there. So anyway, um, there's a, a link in the description below um, to the abstract and, you know, hopefully um, this has been helpful to you.